Hi there! So I've not made a video in a very, very long time, and a lot of time obviously has passed since then. Um, so obviously I've changed a little bit. As you can see, you know, my hair is slightly neater, my fringe is still disastrous, but not as bad as it was. Um, and I've aged a couple of years, but I'm still me, so hi again. Um, today I felt like doing a quick little video based on one of my new purchases, which is a corset. And I keep getting asked by people I know in person um, about where I get them from, how I know they fit, what it's like to wear them, do I tight lace, all that sort of thing. So I thought I'd give a sort of absolute beginners 101 here. So I'm not going to be really covering topics like custom fitting or long term tight lacing or anything like that. But I'm going to try and cover some of the basics for people who really want to know, God, my friend, who really want to know a little bit about corsets who've never used them before. So here we go. So the first thing I should probably do is describe what a corset is because you're going to see a lot of things on the market, especially nowadays with the whole Kardashian trend and so forth, about what constitutes a corset. So you'll see everything from one of these, these sort of elasticated hook and eye dealies to full boned, heavy weight, heavy duty steel bones corsets, described as corsets, as waist trainers. Um, so what what do you expect? What are you paying for? What, what, what will they do? Well, first things first, most people in the corseting community see corsets to be fairly heavy duty garments which both shape and support your body. In this instance, that basically means that plastic bones don't really cut it. Um, and neither do the elasticated belts that are often advertised as waist trainers or corsets. So let me try and break this down for you, okay? What I'm wearing right now is a wide elastic belt. There's no boning in this, it's got a few hooks on either, so this is a belt, okay? Now, what we've got here, which is an elasticated sort of waist trainer that you can get for, well, anywhere from 12 pounds to 30 quid um, online, or even more, and you often get them in sort of elastics and so forth. Now, this isn't a corset. And let me show you why. This will take a few moments. Um, corsets tend not to bend to all the contours of your body as such. They shape your body to them. I mean, the corsets shape to your body as well. But the idea is to give you a very specific shape. They shape your body. Now, if I can deal with all these hooks and eyes while I'm talking. This has quite strong elastic, okay, so it's it's like girdles, support underwear, your spanks, etc. It is quite elasticated, it's you know moderately constricting. It will feel tight. It's designed to be tight. Um but the thing is, because it's elastic, it shapes more to you than you do to it. So Right, there you go. So that's it. Put on basically. Now, as you can see, it's pulled me in a wee bit. Okay, it's good. It's, it's, it's firm. It's got nice firm. This would smooth you out under a garment. Okay, and they're great for that purpose. But despite the fact that this even has steel bones, and I'll show you. Okay, this is a wee magnet. Here's one of the bones. That's just stuck there. These are spiral steels in here. But you can already see down the side it's kinked in. And it shapes as I it shapes itself to me as I breathe, as I move. I can bend right over. I can bend all the way back. I can go side to side, and it kinks and it bends and it stretches. So while these pull you in, and the latex ones might even take a couple of inches off your waist through water loss, it's not the same as a true corset. And if you wanted to waist train, and by that I mean to make a significant reduction to your waist over a long period of time, this wouldn't do it. This would stretch out way before that happens. Um, and the reason that the Kardashians look the way they do is because they do a lot of exercise, they've got a lot of money, they've got a lot of time, and they're also genetically blessed. So this is not a corset. This would be generally described as a waist tamer. It smooths you, it pulls you in a wee bit, It'll look really nice under some dresses, and I wear this under some dresses, and it just smooths you down, but it won't train your waist. So, 
there's two basic things that I consider are the are necessary for a true corset. One is steel boning, but as you can see, this is steel boning, and it doesn't it doesn't actually shape me. Um, and you can see also it's only got one layer and then these boning channels, and it's elastic. Because it stretches, it's not a corset, and because it's not sturdy and it won't support you and it won't shape you any more than a quick cinch in, it's not a corset. The other thing that corsets often have, alongside non-stretchy um, non fabric and boning, is a busk. Not all of them have this, but this is a common thing, and often people, when people see a busk, they think, real corset. This is also not a corset. It's pretty. Um, I've worn this a few times. Um, it says, but first thing you'll notice is the size. It's described as a size, this will focus, it's a size S. It's a small. A corset will give you a measurement in inches or centimetres. And the other thing about this, while it's got this beautiful busk and it hooks around you, these bones are plastic. And they're very flexible, just like the waist tamer I put on. So when I put this on, okay, so it looks quite nice. You know, these are these are very nice for dressing up of an evening, but they are not corsets, and I'll show you why. Um, I got this back when I was a wee bit smaller. Um, I've not corseted in a while, so this might not fit me properly. But you know, there you go. And you saw a lot of these in the shops. You, you see them in like uh, underwear shops. You see them in fashion shops when they're in fashion. Okay, that looks quite nice. It's again. It just smooths and it goes in a wee bit, but it's not curved to my body at all. So, again, if I bend or anything, and this is a big problem with these corsets, because they have plastic bones, once you start to really pull it in, instead of pulling you in, the bones will just kink. And that's you ruined your garment. So these are great if you just want to go out and you don't want to wear anything too constricting, but it looks nice, you know, a bit princessy. Um, it's got the lacing up the back. It looks, it has all the the surface features of a corset, but again, this is a bustier or a basque. It's not a true corset. So if you're looking for a real corset, what, do you, what are you looking for? Well, you want steel bones or synthetic whalebone, which is plastic, but it's very strong. Um, and most corsetiers don't really use that except at the higher ends and the custom level. Um, Non-stretchy fabric, strong steel bones, um, and good lacing up the back. Normally, you will not get ribbon lacing in a good corset until you get to more expensive ones. They have very specially designed ribbons. You'll see a lot of the really high-end fetishy gar garments that Dita Von Tees has made by Mr. Pearl. They have a very strong, specialised ribbon in the back. But most corsets that you get off the rack, if they have a ribbon in the back, they generally don't they don't pull you in very well. The the lacing's not strong enough, it might stretch. So you want something which is a bit like this. Now this is a sort of shoelacy style lacing. It can also be round, this is flat. And you also want a lot of these grommets, all these little eyelets here, so that you get a good even compression all the way down the back and you want very good reinforcement. So on the sides of all of these channels, all of these eyelets, we've got a very strong stiff, it's not very flexible, it can't bend to the side, but very strong stiff boning and you've got it on the other side here and then it's reinforced again very close up by another one which follows the curve at the back. And on the inside. And again, not all real corsets have this, but it's a common feature, especially when you're wanting something which really shapes you. You've got this thing called waist tape, which is this ribbon coming up the middle, right at the waistline. And that is to help support the shape of the garment. And I'll show you why. Okay, so this is me in my own corseted form. At the moment, I've got a 29 inch waist, 40 inch hip. And First thing I've got to do is open this right out. So the best way to do this is roll the edges and move them up and down. Sorry, my screen just went off. Like this. Okay. 
and it slowly pulls the loops out. And I'll talk to you about those loops in a moment because that's also quite important when lacing the corset, but I'll come to that later. Okay, it's nice and stretched out. Now this is, I should tell you which corset this is because I do actually recommend this. This is the V-Style Wide Hips Matte Black Corset. And they have a lot of sort of prettier brocade fabrics as well. But it's, it's prefixed with WH, meaning wide hips. And that means that all the compression is here. And all your hip is free. You don't want to be pinching at the hip. And you don't want to be squeezing at the ribs. You want to be able to breathe and move fairly naturally in a corset. It's not like your Victorian garment, or your misconception of a Victorian garment. So we've got this here as well, which you can like or leave. This is this is a lacing guard, and that stops the lacing from digging in if you don't really like it. But if you want to show some skin or something, you fold that back, or you can unpick it. So I'm going to keep that on by wrapping it around like this, following it to keep the smooth and then you position it so the waist tape the narrowest point of the corset is at your waist and then you hook it up okay as you can see it's all already you can see that it has a dramatic curve to it and all good corsets if you're going to be reducing your waist by more than say four inches you really want a good curve and then here's where the leasing comes in up the back, and you can see in my mirror too, you can see that the lacing is at the centre point, at the waist. Okay, now if it's at the bottom, as in say Tudor style bodies, medieval ones, um, or in fashionable corsets, basques, um, it's usually at the bottom or it's at the top. This makes it very difficult for you to actually evenly pull it in, because you want your, your narrowest point to be at the waist. So you give it a quick tug first, and then you sort of hold the upper part of the loop that comes into the top eyelets as you start pulling down that excess to the middle. Okay? And you don't really want to compress yourself yet because first you want to even out all your laces. Okay? And then you do the same with the bottom. So come under, you find the lowest loops. Pull that round, find the bottom part, skip it, make sure it's not twisted, okay, you don't want the knot at the bottom to get twisted in the upper laces. Adjust your lace guard now if you want to, and then you just hoik this up. Okay, so here you are, as you can already see, I've got a bit of gap here, and I've got a lot of space here, I'm going to step back a wee touch. So as you can see, this has a nice dramatic curve. This will give you the hourglass shape. And now, once all the excess has been pulled away, you can start tightening the laces. Now, when you are first wearing a corset, you don't want to tighten a new corset too much. You want it to feel nice and firm and sort of smooth all over your body, but you don't want to be pulling yourself so tight you can't breathe. That's not how a corset should feel and you don't want to over tighten it on the first few goes. This is because in any tight tight lacing garment you need to let the fabric adjust itself to your body. Um, a well-made corset shouldn't pop at the seams or anything like that but the fact is that over time as you wear these the corset adjusts, its, adjusts itself a little bit to your body and the bones start to follow your shape a little bit more and the fabric relaxes and you need to give it time to do that Otherwise, it's just going to feel horrible and it's not going to fit you well. So, let me just check at the back of my mirror. Okay, there's a little bit of a lumping coming up here because I didn't adjust the lace guard. This is also called a modesty panel, by the way. Just remembered. You don't want to get that modesty panel so it's not sticking out from between your laces. And then, so, now I've just got this corset today, so I'm not going to overlace it, but I have also worn corsets. For quite a while so my body is already somewhat adjusted to them so I can tighten it down a wee bit and I'm looking for about a three inch gap I'd say 
for me. You might want maybe a four inch gap in the first wearing. Most people wear about a two inch gap. Um, generally, if you've just bought a corset, if you can close it the whole way without any restriction, any shaping, that means it's too big because as your body adjusts the corset, your waist will start to slim itself down. It'll compress more. And as the corset relaxes itself a bit more, it'll also just stretch out just a touch. It shouldn't stretch very much at all, but it will. And if you close it the whole way, then once your body adjusts, it's just going to sit really loosely on you. It's not going to do anything. So most people wear their laces parallel. So you see all the eyelets up here, they're going evenly. Got a little bit of loose lace in here, just felt it. But not all, not all people do wear the, the, the back even like this. What you want to look for is not whether they are perfectly parallel, but whether they curve in. If the back of the corset, once it's lace, lace tight, starts to curve in like that, with the bones bending, it's not strong enough. Um, and you can wear it for fashion purposes, but if you wanted to tight lace, and again, I'll get onto that in a wee bit, it, it won't. It'll buckle, it'll strain, it'll, and if the bones bend in that sort of way, it tends to put strain on the stitching and eventually it'll break. So this is the corset on. I've not tied it because I'm going to take it off in a moment, but obviously you just tie it in a wee loop at the back. And then if you want to hide the excess laces, you can sort of roll it up and tuck it under the edge of the garment like that. So, I really like this corset, <laughs> and I'm going to tell you why. You can see that I can put my thumbs all the way around here. And I can also breathe in quite deep, so what? My, my breathing is not restricted. Now, there is one thing that is restricted about your breathing, and that's your diaphragm. Because of the way the corsets affect your body, most of your intestines get pushed down, especially if you're tight lacing to quite an extreme waist. Obviously, your organs need to move. It's the same as if you're pregnant. Um, so your intestines tend to move down. Up here, not much really changes, but because of the pressure, your lower chest can't expand in the way it normally would because it has to expand down as well. So your diaphragm is restricted and you tend to breathe more with the upper parts of your lungs. But aside from that, you should be able to breathe just fine without feeling stretched, without feeling confined, without feeling out of breath. If you feel like that, the corset does not fit and you shouldn't keep wearing it because that's dangerous. Now, the other thing here is this, let's see, what's the waist gap there? Is that about a three inch waist gap? Let's say it's a three inch waist gap. This fully closed is a 22 inch corset. So right now it's sitting at 25 inches. So I've taken my waist down by four inches, which means that my hips are still at 40 inches, but my waist, 25, which gives me a 15 inch waist gap. Now, if this didn't leave space here, then that's going to pinch and it's going to dig into your hip bones and it's going to be very uncomfortable. It's going to be a horrible experience. This is cut with something called a hip spring and the hip spring is this curve here. And a good hip spring is critical, I think, to lacing down to a dramatic hourglass curve. Even if you're not really tight lacing, the corset should have some of your body taken into account because you don't want to constrict yourself here. For a start, your organs have to move down and you don't want to be able to, you don't want to find yourself uncomfortable when you sit down, when you bend over. By the way, can I bend over and touch my toes? Yes, I can. Um, you don't want to have bones suddenly digging you in here or anything like that. So I've got a lot of space around here. As you can see, I can run my fingers around here just fine. This is actually slightly too roomy. Um, and here's, here's a sign you can tell with your corset is not fitting. This bit's quite roomy and we've got a bit of a puffer fabric here. But if I were to tighten this up further, that would probably go away. I'm still breaking this corset in. I'm still wearing it sort of loose. And once I've worn it in a bit more, I can slowly start tightening it up and that would mostly go away. So that's a sign of a decent off the rack corset. It's got a good curve to it. It's solidly built and it takes your body shape into account. This is a proper corset. I'm going to show you another proper corset, which 
you might want to avoid because whilst it is constructed in just the same manner it's got strong fabric it's got heavy bones it's got good lacing it's stitched pretty well if you want an hourglass shape the next course i'm going to show you will not help now as you can see getting out the corset you need to do some laces at the back as well otherwise you could you, you shouldn't unhook your corset whilst it's still laced up that will probably be uncomfortable for you you might damage the busk and you might damage the stitching so loosen it up so you can just unhook it nice and easily and take it off okay put that to one side this is an old one and it's a bit this is actually from when I was coursing a lot more a few years ago and so it's actually a 20 inch it's not the right size for me anymore but when I bought it I had a 26 inch waist I'd been wearing 22 inches quite a lot and I could course it down to 20 and even sometimes 18 inches didn't do that very often um, I'll see if I've got an other example yeah this will do and this is a more recent one in the same kind of shape now this is advertised on Corsets UK or Corsets Story as a waist training corset and it is built to take that strain. You can see here you've got flexible but strong boning. This is spiral steel again. As you can see my magnet is stuck. Um, and at the front we've got flat steels around the zip. This is a corsetry zip by the way. Um, which is sometimes in, replaced with a busk but you want to be very careful when getting corsets with a zip at the front because some of them use inferior zips and those will just burst it's not usually done in corsetry but you can get them now it's double boned all the way around so this can actually technically lace me down quite a long way the problem is and I'll see if I can show you this You'll notice it doesn't have much of a curve down the side. There's no hip spring. It's a very slight curve at the side, so it's more like my natural shape. And this is where you run into problems. And it's the same problem with this corset, which is from the same company. These are Corsets UK, which I think now is called Corset Story. So this is a 22 inch one that I'm unlacing here. Again. Good construction materials. I am not critiquing the way this was made at all. I'm critiquing the shape because you really need to take this into account. So loosen it right up. This is a 22 inch, as you've just seen, I've just laced on a 22 inch corset. Let's go around. Get that. Now already this is a little bit of the wrong shape for me. Um, and also here's another problem with zips, they tend to be difficult to do up, but once you're there, you see a wee bit of curve, it's not bad. Now if I lace this down, turn it over, again, just move it off. But you can already see that the ladies aren't very close together, are they? This is quite a big back gap. Now this corset has been broken in, so I've worn this a few times. This is a fully broken in corset. And you see, I've still got a huge gap to go. So, let's start the top, all the way down. Already it's compressing the ribs here, but and this is flexible bone that can bend inwards. Still got a long way to go. Long way to go here. And it's quite a short corset as well. It doesn't go down as far as the other one. <sighs> That's about as far as I can pull it. See that massive back gap? That's what? Five, six inches? This has barely reduced me at all. I can already feel the edge here digging in at my hip bones, my hip bones right there, and look, right, 
a sign of a good construction is not bending, it's not caving here, but you can see it's really tight, okay? I'm, I'm really desperately trying to adjust this to settle it in, and it's just, it looks okay, but it's really constricting my ribs. You can see I'm getting a wee bit out there. And I've barely laced it down, even though my waist can be reduced further, and I have reduced my waist further, it's not going anywhere. And this kind of corset is only really designed, despite being advertised as strong enough for waist training, this won't get you really much far past a four inch reduction. <sighs> so, 22 inches, what's that, a five inch gap? So it's taken me down to 27 inches. It's not even reduced me three inches. And if I really suck my breath in oh, and let my ribs get really uncomfortably pulled in, you can see that even there, it's getting uncomfortably restrictive. It's digging in here. This is digging into my sternum. This is... <clears throat> I can't bend very well. You know, it, I do feel like a marionette in this. And like I said, it looks great, but even here, that's quite a big back gap at the waist. So this is not very good for waist training. This, as a 22 inch course, it would be good if you have a 26 inch waist or less. But if you are looking for something for waist training or tight lacing, this would not do. And this is also off the rack. So you can see the problems with some off the rack course tree. And I'm not complaining about this course. I'm really not. I think it's beautiful. But laced up even a bit, it restricts my movement. I, by the end of the day, you won't feel comfortable. You'll feel stiff. You'll feel sore. You'll probably be getting your welts here where stuff has been digging in. You'll be out of breath. Um, it just, it doesn't give you the curve. So, this is what is often referred to as the curvy tube. And with the curvy tube shape, you're not really looking for anything more than a four inch waist reduction. Even if it is advertised as waist training or tight lacing, which in the corset community really means reducing your waist by five or six inches or more. Um, a four inch, a four inch waist reduction is a kind of the standard thing. So there you have it. I've sort of broken down all the corsets. What you need to look for if you want to be getting, if you want a dramatic hourglass, if you want that sort of vintage, highly feminine shape, if you want a tight lace, if you're thinking of taking up waist training, something you want something with a hip spring, with good non-elastic fabric with good strong bones and something that is comfortable because if you want to waist train you have to wear it for a while. I will get on to waist training maybe in the next video if you really want me to know if you really want me to tell you about waist training but otherwise there are loads and loads of guides on the website and I'll see if I can link you to a few more experienced people who could really give you the lowdown on waist training um, but let me know if you want to hear more and in the meantime, 